Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet, and even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. <laughs> Mr. Marshall, how long do you plan to be with us, sir? Oh, three or four days. Oh, and I'll be expecting my daughter, Melison to join me. We'd like rooms on the same floor, if that's possible. Oh, I think so. We only have one floor. I'll show you to your room. I hope you'll find the accommodation satisfactory. Oh, you're going to carry it? Well, we don't exactly have a large staff. Oh, well, that's all right. I'm sure I can manage it. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Joe, where were you? You could have carried a suitcase. Yeah, it was a pretty good time, wasn't it? I mean, oh, gosh, I'm, I was late. <laughs> J.P. Marshall? Oh, no. What's the matter? You know who he is? He owns half the acreage between here and Crabwell Corners. Quick, get me a tray and a pitcher of ice water and a couple of glasses. <laughs> Did you finish with the Bennett job? Yeah, I finished. Completely. Did you have a falling out with Mr. Bennett? Well, let's see. First, he made some mention of my antecedents. And then I made an excellent suggestion as to where he could take his business. And then, uh, yeah, I guess you could say we had a falling out. Honey, I don't mean to interfere with your business, but, well... Mr. Bennett has been a good paying customer. Well, honey, if you're suggesting that I become an apple polisher just to get a job, you can forget that right now. Okay. I guess that's why I went for you, because of your stubborn independence. Forget the stubborn independence. That's better. Besides, who needs old man Bennett? I figured up our accounts this morning, and we're $100 in the black. No kidding. Well, honey, I can't believe that. And with you handling the bookkeeping. I mean, you're so inexperienced in these sort of things. And we've already got money to the good? Here you are. Figures don't lie. I'll say they don't. See, the book. Hmm? Oh, oh. I've got everything listed. Like bill, gas, food, fuel, clothes, insurance. And then in this column, I've listed what we've taken in. Well, honey, that's beautiful. Well, let's celebrate. We'll fly up to Riverdale and have dinner at the lodge. I'm with you. We'll show them. As long as we've got each other, we're as independent as the 4th of July. I'll go get ready. Okay. <laughs> uh, honey? Yes, darling? I uh, hate to bring this up, but uh, where are the house payments? The what? The, uh, the house payments. Shouldn't they be listed here? Where? Silly under expenses. See, it's a... Uh... Uh... Pill. <laughs> oh, darling. That's okay. So long, Riverdale. I'll go warm up some leftovers. <laughs> Special Shady Rest Room Service. Oh, fine, fine. Thank you, sir. All right. Well, how's every little thing? <laughs> oh, oh, well, fine, fine, just, just fine. That's quite a spread of land you got between here and Cranwell Corners. Uh, that's quite a spread, all right. 
You know, you being a big businessman coming into a rural area like this, there's a lot of nosy people are going to be wondering what you're doing here. Oh, are there people like that around here? <laughs> oh, yeah. Real nosy. Well, that's the way people are. <laughs> yeah. Some of them won't be able to sleep nights wondering what you're up to. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> Real nosy. You know, I, uh, I'd hate to have those real nosy people go through such anguish. Maybe if I told you why I'm here, you'd pass the word along. Oh, it's no trouble at all. Be glad to. <laughs> well, I'm here to look after my crops, to make arrangements for future plantings, maintenance, crop dusting, and so forth. Crop dusting? That's my game. What's that? Yeah. I'm president of the Carson Elliott Enterprises. President? Well, wouldn't that interfere with your, uh, your bell hopping? <laughs> oh, that... You see, I'm the manager here, and that's just a personal touch. Oh, I see. I give all my tips to my favorite charity. Uh, well, I was going to ask you which one that is, but I suppose that's between a man and his conscience, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's in between there somewhere. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Carson. Joseph Carson. Joseph Carson. Carson? Well, most of my land's in alfalfa. Uh, do you use chlordine, uh, toxicine, uh, aramite, and denitro compounds? Oh, yeah, all that stuff. Well, you shouldn't. Well, like I was saying, all that stuff is out. <laughs> Actually, my partner's in charge of that. Oh. Well, what kind of airplane do you use? Oh, regular uh, wings on each side, propeller. <laughs> yeah. Well, my partner's in charge of that, too. <laughs> well, it sounds like maybe we better have a little talk with your partner, huh? Hey, that's a great idea. I'll bring him up here. How do you do that? We start talking prices. That's my department. <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm telling you, the guy's right. He's one of the biggest growers in the country. We could be set for life. Isn't that wonderful, darling? There's only one thing. Go on. Marshall's one of them self-made men, like me. He wants everything done his way, period. Another Bennett, huh? I suppose I have to give him the kid glove treatment. Be an apple polisher? Oh, no, you don't have to do that. Just agree with everything he says. <laughs> oh, fine. Steve, I think what Uncle Joe is trying to say is that, as far as the customer is concerned, the business firm shouldn't be so unbending. Yeah, what I'm really trying to say is the customer's always right. Yeah, that's another way of putting it. In this case, the customer demands to be a little more righter than most. <laughs> Look, let's stop all the beating around the bush. What you're really trying to say is, Steve, be an apple polisher. Oh, he has a neat knack for phrasing things. Isn't that right? Well, golly. All right. If it's an apple polish you want, that's what you're going to get. I'll polish that apple right down to the core. Wait a minute. Maybe I ought to give you a few pointers. About apple polishing? You're forgetting one thing, Joe. I used to be a second lieutenant in the Air Force. <laughs> Marshal, this is Steve Elliott. Oh, you're the partner, eh? Yes, sir. And uh, you're the pilot? Yes, sir. Well, uh, what kind of plane do you use? A 1938 Stearman, sir. Uh, Beg pardon, sir? I said hi. Yes, sir. You can see how eager the young fellow is to please, sir. Oh, isn't he, though? Well, we might as well sit down and talk this over. Yes, sir. <laughs> Anything you want to say to Mom? Just tell her we missed her and to hurry back. Billy Joe! Pardon me, is this what they call the Shady Rest? Yeah, this is the Shady Rest. I'm looking for my daddy. Your daddy? Yes, I'm Millicent Marshall. Oh, your daddy must be Mr. Marshall. Uh, yes, he's upstairs. Oh, won't you go in? All right. This is my sister, Billy Joe. Hello. How do you do? Would you like to register, Miss Marshall? You'll be in room number five, right next to your father. I left my luggage down at the stop. I looked all over for a red cap, but I couldn't find one. Well, we'll take care of it. 
Oh, I separated the suitcases. The five pieces on the left I'll need right away. The larger pile can wait. <laughs> Daddy! My little girl. Wilson, I thought you'd never get here, huh? Oh, come on, Johnny, and let Daddy have a look at you. Let's see now. You just look great, sugar. Oh, thank you. Daddy, why did you bring me way out here? It's so isolated, so, so Dollville. No, oh, baby doll, one day this land will all belong to you. I realize that, Daddy, dear, but still and all, when I think of myself... Mm, yes? Yes, dear? Never mind, Daddy. Suddenly, it's not Dollsville anymore. Oh, Kevin Millicent, this is Mr. Carson. Hi. <laughs> and uh, this is Mr. Carson's partner, Steve Elliott. How do you do? Hi. Uh, Steve's a crop duster. He's going to take me up in his plane to look over my acreage. Oh, Daddy, could I come, too? Well, of course you can, right? Yes, sir. I'll go get the things ready for the flight. <laughs> uh, sir, my plane is just a two-seater. Uh, uh, oh, I'm sure Millicent will have no trouble in squeezing in. <laughs> That's one of the things I do best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well uh, surely we can work out something, boy. Oh, I'm sure we can. <laughs> I'll just get into something more comfy. I'll be right back. <clears throat> well, sir, I'll be glad to show you around. Oh, fine, fine. <laughs> what are we going to do about our suitcases? Do you think they'd be too heavy to carry to the top of the water tower? <laughs> well, that's the way I feel. The water tower of all things. I think it'd be easier to dump in Zippo's hog pond. <laughs> shall I set? It all depends on that female barracuda. She's probably not hungry after eating Steve a lot. You think she's kind of a menace? No worse than the bubonic plague. Oh, well, that's pretty bad. Yes, it is. I wonder what Betty Jo is going to think. Hey, where is everybody? I don't know, but there she is. We may find out soon. Oh, my gosh. What are we going to say? Now, nothing if we can help it. This is strictly a matter between her and Steve. Right. Hi. You ought to see who Steve is with. <laughs> uh, nothing. Mr. Marshall insisted that Steve fly them over his land. Steve really had nothing to do with it. I know. Poor darling. Actually, I forced him to. He does look good. You did? Mm -hmm. I practically made him be an apple polisher. Do anything to get in good. Did he seem very unhappy when he left? Are you kidding? <laughs> I mean, he was bearing up very well. Considering. Considering what? Uh, that he had to share a seat. <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> share a seat with whom? Well, uh, you see, Mr. Marshall had his little girl with him. Oh, he shared it with her. That's nice. Steve's very fond of little girls, but I guess you've noticed that. <laughs> we did this time. <laughs> what is the little girl, 10? 12? 14? That's as far as I care to go. Let's try 38. 38? 38? 24? Thirty-four. <laughs> you're kidding. Oh, please tell me you're kidding. Hey, everybody, we're back. Did you see her? I mean, really. Why, she's... She's... <laughs> Hi, hon. Hi. Say, be a good kid and lay out a clean white shirt in my dark suit, will you? Important engagement? Well, in a way, I've got to fly the marshes up to Riverdale for dinner. Oh, good. Maybe we can eat at our favorite restaurant. Well, honey, I'm stuck with just taking the marshals. The marshals? Well, yeah, Mr. Marshall and his little girl. Little girl? 
Well, that's, that's what he calls her, his, his little girl. Steve, I think you should know. I happened to see her. Not a little girl. Not a little girl. Well, anyway, I'm stuck with taking him up there. Stuck? You mean like a tight seating arrangement? Honey. Oh, why do they have to go there for dinner anyhow? Well, because they don't want to eat at the Shady Rest. Figures. Why do you have to be the one to fly them there? Mr. Marshall asked me. Well, just tell Mr. Marshall to forget it. Remember that you were the one that was all for the apple polishing. Yes, apple polishing, not tomato polishing. <laughs> well, I can forget the whole job if you want. Well, how can you forget it when you've already signed the contract? I haven't signed a contract yet. Oh. I could very easily say, Mr. Marshall, I'm sorry, but I won't be able to go to work for you. You do that. Because I have a very jealous wife who won't let me. How dare you? Don't say that! <laughs> Quiet in here. Sorry, dear. You go ahead. That's a good girl. Too busy. I wanted him to take me to town so I could have my hair done. Oh, uh, uh, this is his busy day. Very busy. <laughs> oh, dear. Kids, he ain't that busy. He can take time out anytime to fly anywhere you want to go. Oh, that'd be wonderful. <laughs> hey, watch it, Billy Joe. Sorry. Would you mind telling him I'll be ready to leave in about an hour? I'll go right down there now and give him the word. <laughs> You're an awfully sweet man. <laughs> that uncle of yours is too adorable for words. Yeah, for words. <laughs> Designing females. Yeah, and the designs are all over Steve. <laughs> the billboard. Poor Betty Jo. Hi. We were just talking about you. Betty Jo. <laughs> well, when people come in, you don't say, hi, we weren't just talking about you. <laughs> That's okay. The way things are going now, what else would you be talking about? Have you seen my friend? Well, I guess we may as well tell you. She was just in here asking for Steve. She wants him to fly her into town so she can get her hair done. Oh, no. I've got to do something to combat this. We've got some glue and a bunch of feathers in the chicken coop. Trying to help. I think the only thing you can do is remind Steve that he's a married man. Yeah, he hasn't been married very long. Maybe he could use a reminder. Yeah. <laughs> Joe, maybe you haven't noticed this, but Millicent, there's a lot of girls. Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> and I've been stuck with her ever since she got here. <laughs> but I'm married. Uh, you gotta be brave and put up with her. After all, you know how the old man feels about her. She's our best chance to hook him. And that's the other thing. When's he gonna come through with the contract? What, what more does he want? I don't know. It's funny. I could have sworn we had him hooked a couple of times and he got away. Still, it's only a matter of time, and if we can keep on the good side of him. Okay. All right. Daddy Joe will just have to understand. Atta boy. I'll agree with you on one thing. That Millicent did a lot of girls. <laughs> you can say that again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Darn right, someone's trying to tell me something. Steve? Come on. Steve? You said you'd take me into town. What'll Daddy say? Forget about Daddy. Now, come on. But, Steve, don't be mean to poor little Millicent. Look, I've got to get back to the hotel. But Steve, what am I going to do about having my hair done? Send it up on the cannonball. <laughs> going on here? What have you done to my baby? Your baby is all right. And so am I now. What? I'm through being your errand boy. Now, see here, young man. You know what this means? Yes, I do. I'm giving up the deal with you. No! <laughs> no, I'm sorry if I let you think you were getting something you're not. Wait, don't listen to him. He doesn't know what he's saying. Boy's been calling too many downdrafts. <laughs> boy, don't, don't say that again. And get to the best doctor. We'll have your whole head aired out. Look, don't forget it. I'm passing up the contract. Oh, no, you're not. You're signing with me. Look, I'm... I'm what? You heard me. Oh, I admit I had you written off as some kind of, of apple polisher. Wait! You can't talk to my husband like that. Honey, take it easy. I think our side is winning. Well, that's right. Now, as I was saying, uh, I was afraid I wasn't getting a man, but some sort of jelly face. And if you let yourself be pushed around just one more time, I'd have torn this up. But as it is, you look it over, son. You want any changes? Go right ahead. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Daddy, what are we going to do about my hair? Oh, sell it to the Beatles. <laughs> hey, Steve, I think there ought to be a clause in here that says, uh, Steve. Same old story, pilot fatigue. <laughs> month long, Saturday Cavalcade pays tribute to one of this year's inductees into the Television Hall of Fame, Aaron Spelling. Tune in for some of Spelling's early and rare television work made decades before Beverly Hills 90210. This Saturday, starting at 12 noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, only on TV Land. Now, stay tuned for That Girl, next on Nick at Night's TV Land. Petticoat Junction. 